Hello from Master CFD. We are here with the Turbo Machinery CFD Simulation Training Package. This CFD training package is prepared for all users of ANSYS Fluent software and consists of three main sections. By clicking on the subscribe button, you will be informed about the newest CFD training videos by Master CFD. Or if you are watching the training video, click on the Master CFD logo and subscribe. This package consists of three main sections. The general section contains a video that gives a general description of the turbine machines. The second part contains a video that teaches CFD methods in simulating turbine machines. And the third section, which includes 10 training videos simulating turbine machines in ANSYS Fluent software. What will we learn in section 1 and 2 of this package? This is the main question. You will learn what are turbo machinery, turbo machineries, applications, and examples, classification of turbo machinery, and overview of CFD models. The first definition is what are turbo machines. In general, turbo machines are divided into three general categories based on their function. The definition of turbo machines and their examples as an introduction to this package are fully explained in the complete tutorial video of the first part of the package. Turbo machines, based on their applications, are broadly classified into power producing, power absorbing, and power transmitting. We have explained all of this with the examples uh, in the tutorial video. There are also some famous examples of turbo machines. These are pumps, compressor, turbines, fans, and mixing tanks. Here we have talked about the types of the turbo machines in terms of their axes and explained this type, examples, and how they work. There are two criteria for classification of turbo machines, direction of flow and physics. Actually, the last thing we have taught in the first part of the package tutorial video is this classification and what this classification means uh, based on each of these. I mean direction of flow or physics. This is the outline for video part 2 of our package. Introduction and overview of modeling approach. Single reference frame model SRF, multiple zone and multiple reference frame model MRF, mixing plane model MPM, a sliding mesh model SMM, and summary. In the second part of the package, at first we have explained why CFD methods are used to simulate turbo machines and the steps for simulating CFDs for turbo machines are given in a tree diagram. There are three basic modeling approaches for moving domains. These are moving reference frame, moving mesh, and dynamic mesh. There are powerful CFD models for turbo machinery simulation in ANSYS Fluent software. These are single reference frame, multiple reference frame, mixing plane, sliding mesh, and moving mesh model. When you create a model using Fluent, you are typically modeling the flow in an inertial reference frame, I mean in a non-accelerating coordinate system. However, Fluent also has the ability to model flows in an accelerating reference frame. In this situation, the acceleration of the coordinate system is included in the equations of motion describing the flow. A common example of an accelerating reference frame in engineering applications is flow in rotating equipment. More details of this rotating equipment are given in the main tutorial video. When the equations of motion are solved in a rotating frame of reference, the acceleration of the fluid is argumented by additional terms that appear in the momentum equations. Fluent allows you to solve rotating frame problems using either the absolute velocity or the relative velocity as the dependent variable. Actually, the equations can be solved in two ways, relative velocity and absolute velocity, and there is a relationship between them. 
In turbo machinery, this relationship can be illustrated using the laws of vector addition. This is known as the velocity triangle. In this package, for each CFT model introduced, the following are described in the commentary. Introduction of the model Grid setup Problem setup Solver setting Solution strategy Limitations Comparison with other models and post-processing. It is important to remember the following coordinate system constraints when uh, you are setting up a problem involving a rotating reference frame. 2D planar geometries. Geometries rotate about axis normal to XY plane with a specified origin. Periodic boundaries are permitted. 2D axisymmetric and axisymmetric with soil. Geometries rotate about the x-axis, and uh, 3D geometries define both rotational axis origin and direction for the fluid domain. Rotationally, periodic boundaries permits smaller computational domain. Actually, for 2D problems, the axis of rotation must be parallel to the z-axis, and for 2D axisymmetric problems, the axis of rotation must be the x-axis, and for 3D geometries, you should generate the mesh with a specific rotational axis in mind for the rotating cell zone. Usually, it is convenient to use the x, y, or z-axis, but fluent can accommodate arbitrary rotational axis.
SRF solver setting. Solver type. You have two types of solver. Pressure based solver and density based solver. Pressure based solver for incompressible flow, low speed compressible flow, I mean subsonic flow. And examples uh, for them are fans, blowers, and pump. And density based solver. Example for density based solver are high speed compressible flows and high pressure compressors, turbines, turbochargers. And dictated by physical model, uh, combustion and multi phase models require pressure based solver. Boundary conditions Inlets Velocity inlet Absolute or relative velocities can be used. It is for incompressible or midly compressible flow. And for 2D axisymmetric visual and 3D problems. Can specify vectors, components, or magnitude and direction. Pressure inlet It is for both incompressible and compressible flows. Definition of total pressure depends on velocity formulation is like the formulas in this slide. Mass flow inlet. It is for incompressible and compressible flow. Outlets. Pressure outlet. For axial flow problems with solar at outlet, radial equilibrium assumption option can be applied such that a specified pressure is hub pressure. Walls. A stationary wall. A stationary with respect to the moving zone, said rotation axis and origin same as fluid zone. A stationary surface, zone rotational speed. And moving wall, use the rotational speed relative to adjacent cell zone. Actually, for moving reference frames, you can specify the wall motion in either the absolute or relative frames. Recommended specification of wall boundary conditions for all moving reference frame uh, MRF problems. Activate moving wall option. Set rotation axis origin and direction same as fluid zone for stationary surfaces and the absolute frame use zero rotational speed. Absolute. For moving surfaces, use zero rotational speed and relative to adjacent cell zone. SRF problems may be more difficult to solve because of large flow gradients resulting from the rotation of the fluid domain. May require a finer mesh to resolve a steep gradients due to rotational effects. Some things to consider for uh, troublesome cases. 1. Make sure that the mesh quality is good, max cell skewness smaller than uh, 0 0.9 to 0 0.95. 2. Start problems using first order discretization. 3. Reduce under relaxation factors and uh, current numbers to enhance instability. 4. Use FMG initialization for hard to start problems especially desirable for compressors, pumps, and similar applications. Consider running the problem as a transient calculation. It can uh, provide more robust convergence versus the standard steady state approach. Use first order discretization in time and about 2-3 time steps per iteration. Run a still steady state is achieved. When you solve a problem in a rotating reference frame, you can plot or report both absolute and relative velocities. For all velocity parameters, for example velocity magnitude and Mach number, corresponding relative values will be available for post-processing, for example relative velocity magnitude and relative Mach number. These variables are contained in the velocity category of the variable selection drop-down list that appears in post-processing panels. 
Relative values are also available for post-processing of total pressure, total temperature, and any other parameters that include a dynamic contribution dependent on the reference frame. For example, relative total pressure and relative total temperature. When plotting velocity vectors, you can choose to plot vectors uh, in the absolute frame, the default, or um, you can select relative velocity in the vectors of drop-down list in the vectors panel to plot vectors in the rotating frame. If you plot relative velocity vectors, you might want to color the vectors by relative velocity magnitude by choosing relative velocity magnitude in the color by list. By default, they will be colored by uh, absolute velocity magnitude. Figures here show absolute and relative velocity vectors in a rotating domain with a stationary outer wall. To have the complete explanations, obtain the full training movies by purchasing this product. To benefit from Master CFT services, including simulation, consultation, and training, contact our experts via info at signmaster-cft.com, www.mr-cft.com.